Good afternoon. Welcome back to Radio Melee. It is another week, and we are back with actually, I, I believe, a repeat guest because we've had Brandon on before. Welcome <laughs> yes. back, home at Waffles, yes. Brandon Young Waff. How you doing? Thank y'all for having me. How how are you guys doing? Good, man. Glad you're here. Thank you. I'm glad yeah. to be here. I'm glad to be here. Heck yeah, man. Truthfully. And we're yeah. glad to have you on. We got some, uh, you know, we saw that you're running something important. We really wanted to highlight that. Mm, um, yes. So if you wanted to, you know, I think now at the, at the top of the episode, it would be great um, if you could let us know, you know, what you're running, why it's important, why people need to be tuning in. I think this is a great project and I hope, you know, people really take note of it and tune in and honor your work. And right before Dang. that, um, if you guys want to have, if you have any questions about the event or what Brandon's talking about or Falco or anything else that you can ask him, uh, mm -hmm. TOing anything, anything from me or Toph, exclamation radio melee, join the discord, get in here, ask some questions. But yeah, with That's that right. said, uh, Brandon, please let everyone know what you're working on right now. I think it's so important. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I mean, obviously we do the normal you know, rollback rumble tournaments are like a big event online. You know, it's been primarily online based, but this tournament is different. It's called uh, the Black Empowerment Melee Invitational. It is uh, all black players, all black commentators, just black content from different people uh, throughout just black history. It, obviously, it's Black History Month. Uh, yep. And I guess for me, what like prompted the whole thing was... uh. You know, and it is not to say that what I'm about to like these events aren't what I'm like talking I'm about to talk about certain kinds of events and they're a good thing, but uh, it's just the premise behind them bothered me, right? So uh, specifically with the, the George Floyd situation when he passed away, uh, you know that was like crazy in America, right? Just in general, like every, everything was just it was wild. Then you know with that the melee community, uh, I think what was it Robbie? few others group of people decided to do um you know a, a charity event raising money for you know situations like black center issues and like police brutality and stuff like that that was also done with the, the net play for palestine which was done really well um and i guess what made me prompt this was like what bothered me with that situation even though like like i said i think it was a great thing that they did i just didn't like it being um uh tragedy being the premise of the event you mm. know I, I felt like at least regarding you know black people I, I i can't speak for any other groups i'm not as educated right so but regarding that i just didn't like how when i see these type of events normally it takes you know something like this to get everyone like yeah. actually waking up right. and to see what's going on. You know, I, I just felt like, you know, especially with the black players that play, we're a small group. We're a small group, period. But we're small even a smaller group in melee. It's just it's just being real. We're a small group. And, you know, I didn't want something to happen for us to all be like, you know, to come together and, you know, to make something happen. Cause melee is great at that. And I love the community for that, but I also just didn't want it to be based off of like, you know, either somebody like we know where something like that happens yeah, or yeah. just so someone getting hurt. Uh, it really just made me want to do something uh, while we're all here and we celebrate like the history of what yeah. black people have gone through in this country. And not even just this country, but just the world in general. Um, I really just wanted to emphasize that. So that that was like the main, my main premise of the uh, event. Yeah, um, and I think that's, that's wonderful, uh, right? You're doing something that you're trying to uplift everyone. You're trying to highlight everyone. You're trying to talk about the good that this mm -hmm. community is contributing rather than saying, okay, the only time we think about uh, black people or something if there if there is a problem, right? And I think it's I think that's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Highlighting everyone, letting every you know. I just I think it's a really wonderful thing. And I don't know if you have yeah. if there's any sort of parts of the event that you're because you said you really wanted to highlight um, things in the country or maybe even in the community. I don't know if you had anything that was part of the event or part of the content to do that or if you've done some of that. I haven't watched um, all of it. I watched some of it. But I was wondering if there was something like that that you you were using for that as well or or if something like we have we, we have like I guess so far for the event, we have like different kinds of content as far as like interviewed numerous players in the yeah. event uh tos community members that are black in the event 
you know, asking them about not, you know, not just their experiences of being black, but, you know, just their experiences in melee and whatnot. And then we'll have, um, you know, different types of content or interviews or speeches from different figures within, you know, uh, black community. It could be, you know, from politicians to athletes, rappers, uh, you know, just community figure. Anybody really with something substantial, we always try to play it. Um, that's really kind of been the thing. And then to highlight uh, just how many uh, good players that are black, right? Uh, I think it's kind of crazy. When I was like going through the pools, I'm like, yo, yo dang, this player's good. This player's <laughs> good. This player's good. It's like a lot of, it's a lot of good people. So, um, you yeah, know, I just wanted to highlight that and emphasize like, you know, it's kind of just like a celebration of the month. And then um, also everything that is donated is going to uh, black uh businesses charities wow yeah whatever we can you know find like last year that's what we did we raised eight thousand dollars last year mm. and yeah we went we donated it to four different groups four different places uh some wow. charities some businesses um so you know just trying to do that again trying to do it every year and just make it you know it's like a staple i know like a lot of people initially i remember when i first announced the the original one people uh felt the way about it but i i kind of think these uh events are important to highlight like these specific just like you know marginalized groups you know when you have like uh for example like smash sisters um, yep. you know uh gay lay summit i think like these are like things that you know like these people exist they're in our yeah. community and you know i think a lot of people forget that you know Especially if you're not within said groups, sometimes it's easy to just think of like we're all one family, and like that is true. But like everybody goes through things, and I feel like you know these people's experiences should be highlighted because it's it's not just in the melee sphere that they have to deal with, you know, the the marginalization. It's like everywhere they go. Um, I don't know if I even answered your question, but I feel like that's like the best way. <laughs> you, did, can, you did. You did. I yeah. can word, uh, you know, the type of, uh, I guess what would be like displayed is just like to emphasize like, you know, not only like what, what just emphasizing what black people go through for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it's just displaying like, hey, this is just the experience, you know, we're all proud to be here and to be black and to coexist with people who are not like us as well, but, you know, you just want to emphasize, I guess, at least I wanted to emphasize that, you know, uh, just, I guess, best way to show everyone, like, the Black experience and for Black people to feel um, good about the event. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's so many times where I've gone to tournaments where, like, uh, I'll never forget this. Uh, I forgot the guy's name. I feel so bad. I went to a tournament in Colorado, right? And it wasn't, it was me. I might have been the, one of the only few black people there, right? And, it, and it's not that that's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not mad at that. It is what it is, right? I go up to this guy, comes up to me, or no, yeah, he comes up to me and he's also black. And he's like, bro, I really appreciate like, you know, you emphasizing this stuff because like it's hard because I'll go to tournaments and I'm the only black person. And sometimes it's like, you know, it, it it's like, Although everyone's welcoming, it's hard to like share certain experiences that I got because people don't understand them, you mm -hmm. know. So this is a type of event is to show the players in the community that like, hey man, we all, we all go through, or have to some extent, can relate to whatever it is that you're going through, and also to show that blackness is a spectrum, right? Like it's not just like not every black person looks, talks, it sounds like me, and is from where I'm from, like. A black person from here, I'm, I'm in Oakland. A black person in Oakland from a black person in New York, from a black person in the UK, they're not the same, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Like, I'm dark skinned, feels light skinned, you know? Where we, like, you know, we're like best friends, but we still got different experiences, right? Um, black men, black women, black uh, trans, black uh, gay people all have different experiences. And, uh, I want to emphasize that that even though we like the commonality is that we're all black, but we're still there's massive difference in some of our like 
our lives and our perspectives based off of, mm-hmm. you know, how we are, where we grew up, all that stuff. It's I want to emphasize that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. We're, we're still just like different. You know what I mean? It's just it's, it, it would be no different than emphasizing like just melee in general. Like right, we our commonality is that we play melee, we play Smash, but we're all different people. You know, right. all three of us are from different places, right? And uh, yeah, really wanted to get that aspect in there also. So uh, that that's pretty much like I guess the my goal with the event. You know, yeah. that's as, that's really that's dope. Yeah. Thank you, man. And, and as yeah. well as just to, uh, you know, have good content and stuff like that. And like I said, this is only a once a year thing. Black History Month. You know what I mean? I feel like it's only right. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. It's just a good time to do it. Good time of year to do it. Yeah. I got to apologize. I don't know why my camera keeps freezing. I keep like turning oh, it on like a slideshow for some reason. <laughs> yeah, um, you're good. It's, it's funny. It's, 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 it, it's really cool. Uh, I mean, just watching the event's been a blast. Like, uh obviously uh, you know it was it was I, I i will i will say just even like listening to the commentary of like you know like ryan ford and taj were were commentating and, and mm. obviously they're so knowledgeable they've been around for so long right. and it's, it's it's it was really dope to to get that perspective and also from from my point of view it's it's really cool because like as a commentator you know i i mean i've said this before but like you and phil really are the reason i wanted to start so Thank commentating you. That's, that's at all, like see hearing that. Like, I, I mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't have. Uh, I don't think I would have got into melee as much as I did, or I wouldn't have been as obsessed with melee as I was. But when mm. I was in college, if not for really you and Phil and 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 Black Smashers, um, right, and right. and you guys were my inspirations as commentators. Mm. Not just even melee. Like you look at probably one of my favorite commentators, if not my favorite commentator of all time, uh, from the FGC is Yipes. Um, mm-hmm. So I just feel like as a commentator, yeah, I gotta goes. pay my dues. Like, yeah, right, like, right, right. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't be where I am in the melee community if not for like Black Smashers contributions. Mm-hmm. Uh, as as a commentator, I think that's pretty like unequivocally like a lot of the most legendary commentators just have been, you know, like like yourself. Uh, right, and right, right. you know, not to not to get all sappy, but I, I don't know. I just think. It's, nah, it's I mean, I, I appreciate so, it, man. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely. You know, coming from you, that's crazy. You know, it's like, <laughs> damn. You know, you one of the biggest commentators out there. You know, um, I so are you. So <laughs> yeah, okay. thank you. I, I just, uh, yeah, it's just. I guess this just event is just to highlight. You know, all of our experiences and trying to do the best to put it into a positive experience, mm-hmm. but also addressing what really happens to. You know, you don't want to. Like, I don't. I didn't want to be too. Like, I don't want to be overwhelming positive to where I'm just like lying. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Realistic, I, yeah, yeah. But at right. the same time, I'm not trying to just only like hit people with just like, you know, heavy, just, just heavy or just even just messed up scenarios. But yeah. I, I think mm-hmm. it's cool to just emphasize this, too, because even outside of Smash, man, when like I, I you know, to to go through the content, I've been watching like a lot of interviews, speeches and stuff like that. And you just see like. It's so like what black people went to this to like in this country. For me to even be able to commentate, like so many people had to go through so much, right? And I, I at least if anything, it's like just an ode to them, even if they don't know melee or follow it. You know, it's just like, hey, we're gonna put this on on behalf of like people like you who you know just made a blueprint for us to you know be able to to do regular things. You know, like a hundred years ago, like that wasn't oh, yeah. a possibility. Just just going, I couldn't just go in any store. You know what I mean? If I wanted mm-hmm. to. And the fact that I can now is because people laid the groundwork. It literally died for like, you know, mm-hmm. me doing what I'm doing right now. So, yeah. Just yeah, try to think, try and to, I think what you're doing is also leaving something for other people to appreciate and use as their springboard going forward, right? Yeah, hopefully, you know, hopefully, like, I, I really hope if, if any group, I hope gets something out of it, it, it is black people because, you know, that's that's who is really for for me. But, you know, even people who aren't black, like to just know, like, you know, like the, the support is so good. I, I love the fact that people can just understand it, you know, uh, and really just like empathize. And like I said, like this doesn't just apply like stuff like this. I don't think should just apply to it. just 
black people, bro. Like any any, any like marginalized group who's really just like have had issues in this country, you know. Like, why not? You know, sure. it's like mm-hmm. uh, we we're all here. We're all trying to exist, and I, I just wanted to emphasize that on behalf yeah. of being black. I, I I like that's really all I know. So you know, that's why I wanted to emphasize it. So. I, I I'm happy about the event. I'm really happy about everybody's like support though. I think that's that's yeah really the dope part. You know, like I think it's one thing hearing it, you know, randomly in chats or something, but when you know when my mom is like happy about the event and stuff like that, that uh, really makes me oh, feel yeah. good. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like oh, okay, I'm doing something like good. You know, <laughs> I don't know. At least I are I am trying to. And at first it kind of was just like I didn't think too much into it. Until I start realizing, like people's parents, like we we sold Bimmy shirts, and I think it was Justice shouts to Justice. I think his mom bought some shirts. Um, oh, people's parents like... were buying shirts and retweeting it, and it, I thought that was really cool, wow. man. So it's yeah, just bigger cool. than like even something that's just related amongst our, our community. Like I, I just think like seeing stuff like that, seeing like older people like the event, I think is really cool, and and it shows them. Like, you know, an aspect of just, like, what we do, you know, because a lot of times, like, parents, grandparents, they're not really, like, they kind of know, but they're not, like, at least for me, they're not, like, mm-hmm. privy to what exactly is going on. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's just crazy if I see my mom watching a Smash tournament or, like, my grandmother watching a Smash tournament, you know, and then they're like, oh, okay, I see it. They're like, oh, yeah, this is no different than, like, watching, like, basketball or football or whatever. So it's cool to see that. I think that's like my one of my favorite parts. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, family's wow. always uh, family's always going to be, you know, top priority. I feel like that's that's For really sure. that's really cool to hear. Mm-hmm. That's really cool to hear. Yeah, it's, it's it's dope, man. I'm 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 happy about it, and I'm just happy. Shouts to all the players, everybody who helped out. You know, um, just anybody involved in the event, and that goes to even like you know people like. You, guys putting this on like it's not all black people that make this event like cohesive so i, I appreciate everybody just for yeah, even paying you. attention yeah yeah Y'all um, are dope for that well <laughs> um i mean we've talked about it for a little bit but i before we before mm-hmm. we move on i want i want people to know we've talked about it that some of them are going to be interested where can they mm-hmm. go and when can they go to to find it? Because it's going on some this weekend too, right? Yeah, yeah. So the the main so we did the open bracket last week, uh, and now we're doing like the main event, main bracket. It's all this weekend on my channel, the Waffles Twitch TV slash the Waffle seventy seven, mm-hmm. uh, Twitter slash Young Waffle. You want more updates? But pretty much, it's gonna be three day event. Um, and we're just gonna have like a bunch of singles matches Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We got some content, we got some interviews. Hopefully, we got like stuff from other games that we're gonna put in there. So okay. it's just gonna cool. be like a little show. And uh, it'll be going from, uh, I'll just use specific time because I'm in the West Coast, uh, 12 mm-hmm. to about eight or nine each night is the plan. Maybe, maybe 11 to, to nine, it, it give or take depending on everyone's schedules but yeah it's just gonna be throughout the day uh just a bunch of melee a bunch of dope matches uh and yeah we got like a summit format going on it's it's kind of it's kind of crazy so I'm mm-hmm. on the hype. Well, that's wonderful man well again yeah. uh really wanted to shout you out for that i think it's a great thing that you're doing um and if we're able to draw some attention to it i mean i think we're pretty happy to do that yeah. so thank awesome. you man and- I remember, you know, it was actually because I remember last year, I remember watching and uh, uh, on that note, mm-hmm. I remember I, I, I didn't see it coming, but Real mm-hmm. Thing took the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Over a pretty stacked field, right? I mean, Axe got like fourth. I think yeah. Axe like, yeah. yeah. So yeah. do we think the Real Thing can get the two peat? Mm-hmm. I think he can, but I don't know if he will. You know, okay. as a lot has changed. Uh, uh, obviously, Axe can't play this year. That's a tough one. It's a tough one. Uh, I just found out. Um, I'm gonna have to tweet this, but I- I'll just announce it here. Two Saint has to drop out. He has some stuff to do. He can't make it, oh, and that's who the real thing played in Grands. Right. Uh, so he definitely could do it, but it's still like, like you said, Billy's there. 
Flash is in the cut now. You know, uh, I feel like with Bap, anything could happen playing him. I just, I <laughs> yeah. don't know. Um, you know, Dewan obviously, Dewan's still there, and then you Kalindi got players like yeah, Kalindi. You got uh, Typhoon. I feel like people didn't even know Typhoon was black, right? I did not know Typhoon was black. Yeah, Typhoon. I, don't, I don't played him so many that. times. I played him in like several dead play servers, but that's not play. <laughs> I have no idea. Right. <laughs> Typhoon's in the cut, and that's Marth. So. It was, yeah, a question. So. There's a lot of Prometheus who I guess has wins on King Momo and H Twa and plays Ganon. Mm -hmm. They're in the same pool actually too. King Momo, I forgot King Momo. King Momo, like mm -hmm. I honestly don't know. <laughs> but uh, wow. John, the real thing, he he can for sure. That's my yeah. guy. Uh, but mm -hmm. I just it's just this is so many great players in here that. I feel like there's no like decisive like I think the closest player would have been Axe, right? I think he yeah. would be like the favorite and even he like lost last year, so Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ain't yeah, no I, telling, man. You, you very very excited about that. To watch. Out, please. Yeah. Uh, hope everyone TV, hope everyone watching The Waffle 77. That's right. I, mean, I got a question for you guys and to the the chat or anybody watching. Who do you guys got winning this event? If you had to pick, that's a good question. If, you if had I had to, to pick right now, it. I would say Kalindi. Okay. Because okay. I think, well, I think Kalindi, if isn't Kalindi's he going Falco? I was about to say he might be playing that's, Falco. That's I think he's he he playing, playing Falco. Falco. Okay. Well, I don't know. I, everyone knows. I think if Kalindi's playing good, he's like a top five player. So <laughs> anything could happen with Kalindi. Really crazy. Like, yeah. He, you know, if he just like wakes up one morning, decides to go beast mode, then you can't stop him. It's right, just, right. A it's just a train of shines and. So I, that's my yeah. pick. That's okay, my pick. Fair. And Kalindi, I mean, I've known Kalindi for like, I've probably known him besides like you obviously running the event. I feel yeah. like I probably, I guess Dewan, but I've known Kalindi mm -hmm. longer than I think pretty much anyone else in the field. So mm -hmm. obviously I have a soft spot for him in the first place. Well, you watched his progression, man. You know, he's just mm -hmm. insane, right? Yeah. What about you, yeah. uh, PP? Remind me of a couple mm -hmm. people, of the other ones, because I know we, I remember we talked about the real thing, but who else did okay. we have? That was. Um, Okay, uh, Dewan, obviously. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Flash, Bap Activated, King Momo. Huh. Um, Daryl's in there. Typhoon, really good Marth. Prometheus, really good Ganon. I feel like people don't know that. Like, his Ganon mm -hmm. is, like, really good. Uh, uh, Bra hmm. Brad's Monkey, who took Kalindi to game five. Oh, wow. To Ooh. games of Ginger. Brad's hmm. Monkey made it in there. Um, who else is in there? There's a couple of people or people who are like pretty nice. Oh yeah, Mog Malachi. Oh uh, yeah, oh yeah, really well. Mog's Justice. good. A lot of there's a lot of good people. I, I, Salt. <laughs> oh yeah, Salt. yeah. So Salt is getting really good. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll I'll go uh the real thing. I'll go for the I'll go for the two Pete. I'll believe. Okay. It. Okay. Okay. We'll Let's establish go. a narrative. Let's establish a narrative. <laughs> the Falco conglomerate, bro. You gotta <laughs> That's right. See it together, bro. That's right, man. Yeah, Same no. Wrong. I could totally see him doing it too. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm I'm hyped, man. It should it should be a fun event for sure. Should be a good time. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. So again, everybody, I'll see. I'll hope to see everybody who's tuning in, whether it be on whether you guys are here with us on Twitch or. uh if you're watching Radio Melee on the YouTube or if you're listening to our podcast edition, I hope to see all of you in chat this weekend in, uh, yeah. in Brandon's stream chat. Should be a good time. Should be pretty yep. uh, pretty fun Melee. Yep, we'll start uh, Friday. Real quick, I'm sorry to cut you off. Friday, oh, yeah. at, uh, Friday February 25th at 11 a.m. Western time. Pacific. Uh, Pacific time. Yeah, yeah. So around around that time... That's when you guys want to. We we usually before we actually start pools, we play like an hour or hour and a half long of content, oh. different videos of interviews, speeches, whatnot, and then we go into the melee. So. That's that's dope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. So stay All tuned. Right. Yeah, well, guys, please check that out. Um, but uh, for now, at least we're gonna we're gonna keep things moving a little bit with the mm -hmm. the typical radio melee stuff. We're gonna have you guys call in in just a moment, exclamation mark radio melee, if you want to come through and do that. But, That's right. But first, uh, the community voice. Yes, the community voice from last week, if I remember correctly, was basically about matchups. The okay. classic smasher. Uh, I don't know, c complaint, whatever you want to call it. People are always talking about, man, this, this matchup is really fun to play, but really boring to watch. Or really fun to watch, but oh, I hate playing, this, or I hate playing the matchup. It's so hard mm -hmm. to play. 
Um, PP, I like some of your answers, but uh, here's some of the answers we got from the community. What are your favorite matchups to watch and but not necessarily play, and vice versa? We got Thomas saying, my favorite match to watch is Fox Falco. I love the dynamic between Falco's ability to pressure and combo with huge vertical strings. Fox is more dynamic, so he's going to use his maneuverability to position himself within Falco's comfort zone. Get smaller, chippier combos. I like that chippier. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> like a like a like a autumn wind, an autumn breeze. It's, oh, it's right. really chippier. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Chip Zana from Guilty Gear. Anyway, playing wise, I love Fox Martha's Fox. That's crazy. That <laughs> so is crazy. crazy. <laughs> Holy right. cow. Awesome. I enjoy trying to have a new but No, it's fun. It's fun if it's not a tournament, honestly. Like, you get hit hard, but it's, you know. No, it's cool. As long as there's nothing tied to the result, I don't mind getting grabbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's like it's like uh it's like a Dark Souls boss, you know? Like they, yeah. they, they, they got a big sword and they hit you and kill you. No, it's I I, I do get it. It, it. it is fun. And you have to roll uh, a lot to get out of there. Thomas says, uh, yeah, you do have to roll a lot, just like in Dark Souls. I don't get as salty when Marth combos me. Thomas, you might have the mindset to become a true top player. You should uh, definitely stick yeah. with your melee. Yeah, a lot of Falcos sure. out a lot of Falcos out there, though. I'm not sure that they're yeah. I'm not sure if they're ready for that, but I do like I do love the the Fox Marth, that's gonna take them far. What a mm-hmm, well, they got mm-hmm. a head on their shoulders. Uh, Garlic butter. Yeah. That's a great man. Garlic oh. butter is making me making me hungry. Yeah, no, right. As an, <laughs> as an average net play Falco, I really hate floaties. I just want to hit buttons fast, and floaties ruin that game plan. But in contrast, I love watching floaty versus floaty matchups. They're long, but they do a great job highlighting spacing, anti pressure, decision making, and patience. Petrus mm-hmm. Samus is <laughs> melee's purest form. Don't at me. Wow. Please don't wow. add garlic butter. What a what a yeah. what a um. Uh, that's a connoisseur's opinion if I've ever seen one. Dude, these, right? are, some, these are almost like hot takes, is what we have. Yeah, almost actually, hot takes, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was definitely scolding. Scolding. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if we're going to make it through all these. Yeah, that, I know. <laughs> well, Ivan Rosales, we got one more Fox Marth liker. Being able to rush down Marth is so entertaining for me. And I feel a lot of pain getting grabbed. Oh, he likes the pain. Makes it hurt so good. <laughs> I enjoy watching Peach Marth. I feel like that match is so big, Brad. I just love enjoying i feel like he meant to type something more after that but <laughs> right. the sentence just ended i just love enjoying hey any enjoyers too. in chat yeah dude you, that's that's kind of your matchup back in the day Pe- peach marth peach in particular Pe- yeah, yeah that you was kinda, you kind of wrote the book on that matchup I that, feel like. that matchup is i mean it's at least at, back then it was really rough for peach i'm not sure if it's gotten that much better if i'm being you're kind of the reason I yeah like, i yeah you definitely uh <laughs> make the blueprint on how to how to make peach invalidated yeah, yeah. yeah but i mean if if you're if you're if you know at least marth is making a little bit of mistakes i think it's a very it's a it feels very intelligent on both ends because you know mm. marth can't swing wildly peach has to see well can i pull a turn up can i fake it what can i do if i do have it that marth's like okay well now i have to play a little differently i have to position right and then peach could do a really good outplay to get out if she gets hit mm. i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of times where you're where you really have your pinky out and you're hmm yes intellectual gameplay, uh, mm. and, but you know I mean the Fox Marth enjoyers I think were really the people that I mean with there there's something else and I I salute them honestly I guess if you have enough foxes in the community some of them have to like playing Marth I think that's just probability theory mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for sure well. <laughs> So many of you asking great questions in the uh, the Discord. I think it's about time to get our first caller on. Talk to we got a lot, lot of there. people that wanted to come in, so let's get yeah, some definitely. callers going. Yeah, we got. Uh, is it Asips? I think we man. I, I learned how to pronounce your name that Sam. other time. Yeah, yeah. So Sam is yeah. back. It the was fa- Sam. Was it yeah, what's Sam, up, Sam? Yeah, Sam and his friend Aiden. Yeah, Aiden's not here this time. But oh, man, where is he? Oh, uh, he's at his house right now. Okay, well, tell him oh, we said hey. So much sense. That's what I would be too. Uh, so. I was gonna ask, would it be harder to become pro in like 2016 or now with everybody learning? And if it's harder now, how would oh. that affect people like Pikachu, like Axe using Pikachu? Ooh. What do you mean by first of all? What do you mean by pro? Do you mean like get a uh, like, get a like professional... let's say top uh 20? Let's say top. 20. Okay, so you just mean skill wise. You don't mean like yeah. get a top sponsor or something. You mean yeah. just become really really good. Yeah. Oh, it's got to be harder this year, right? What do you guys think? Um, um, it's it's weird, right? Because 
you have more training tools mm, now. And that's depending true. on you got and if, play. if you play Falcon, then you have the cookbook, which is incredible. Yeah. Uh, it's and an you got Uncle Punch. Movie. Yeah. And so, okay. but, uh, but then everyone else has that. Right. right. So, right. so yeah. it's kind of, it's, it's weird. It's, um, I mean, I've always kind of been of the mind that, um, you know, the people that are going to be really dedicated are going to be the ones that are going to be able to use the tools more or make their own if there aren't really any there. But if you, the more of your own that you have to make, the harder it is. So I right. would have said, you know, the farther back you go, usually the harder it is. But, you know, maybe there weren't as many people trying. And so I, it, it's always kind of tough for me because circumstances are going to change. I, I would I would if I have to pick one, I'll I get at least to have it one one. We'll let Brandon be the tiebreaker. I'll say 2016. Uh. Yeah, I, I think it's back then. Only because, like, the floor obviously was worse, but I just think the resources, uh, you know, net play was, like, kind of oh. trash back then. Like, I that wasn't really, it. yeah, it wasn't really, like, palatable. You didn't have, mm-hmm. I mean, you had 20XX, but you didn't really have resources. And then depending on where you lived, you know, that could stipend, like, that could, like, hurt your growth mm-hmm. if you live in a region that's, like, not that active. Yeah. Uh, now, although there are more good people, I think that's even more reason why you can get good. <laughs> uh, and True. you you can just play online. I think just traveling in general is just easier than it was like six, seven years ago, right? Um, yeah, I, I would say I would I would say back then would be harder to become pro it, even then even if you were pro back then it didn't lead to much as as opposed to now you get like sponsors get flown out to events and that's not to say that that didn't happen then but like way less frequently you know you kind of just were like had to win a bunch of tournaments and then pay for your way by winning the tournaments whereas like now there's things that are set up to like help you like just avenues and media and all that stuff in play to like uh, push, push people more stru- more structure around it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because twenty fifteen. I mean, when did when did PP? Do you remember when you got picked up by uh, EG? Was that 2015? 2014. 2014. 2014. And then around that time, uh, a lot of oh, there were so many organizations trying to get into melee. So many. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was around when Mango got picked up and everyone else. Um, I think by late twenty fifteen, getting into twenty sixteen, I think a lot of organizations weren't getting into it as much or a lot of the new ones that were coming in had come in and there weren't a lot of more new ones. So I think mm-hmm. if you go actually a little bit later, I think it gets even harder, but I think around 2015 ish, there were still some new orgs getting in. So you could still kind of make it happen. And I think we're seeing a return to that a little bit now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, yeah. So in a way I almost think getting sponsored might've been a little bit easier back then. Cause we just had that Evo surge and so many, we had MLG yeah. and everyone getting in. Mm. So it getting sponsored might've actually been a little bit easier back then. But I think, uh, having, we have, you know, some players that are having streams that are popping off more now, almost like, you know, having a people sponsor or something now. So it's kind of mm. a weird balancing act where right. we've had we've had some give and take uh, financially. I don't really know how that all shakes out. I assume it's a little bit harder now, a little tougher, but I'm not sure. All right. Mm. It's almost like it's funny you mentioned that, like, you know, like like what it takes with regards to like streaming and stuff like that, like to get on a top team, because in some ways it's like. Like you can make an argument both ways. It's actually this is kind of an interesting question for that reason. Like you could you could say that in some ways things are harder, in some ways things are easier. Mm-hmm. You know, because um, yeah. yeah, like like you said, PB, there's more of a uh, even with regards to streaming. Like there's these days there's more as a, more of an emphasis on uh, having to stream if you're a top player. But then yeah. on the flip side, there's a lot more of a blueprint or a framework for you. In like how you talked about the cookbook for Falcon players, nowadays there's a lot more of a blueprint for streamers as well. It's like you kind of you kind of know, you know, most people like it's like, all right, you know, you make your YouTube channel, you know, you can put your clips up or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, and you've got a lot. I would say there are more like back then. The only really is really just kind of mango. Yeah. It's sort of maybe Alex 19 a little bit. But now, mm-hmm. you know, there's there's a lot more like pretty established melee streamers that are actually able to make like a decent amount of income off of it, which is pretty. So, yeah, I think things are just different. And I, Brand, I really yeah. like your point, too, because I was thinking about it first. I was like, well. I guess it must be harder now because there's more good people. But then on the flip mm-hmm. side, if you're trying to go pro, then you're more likely to be one of those people 
today. Mm-hmm. You like, also like, can learn from those yeah. people, right? And you or right. you can learn from the exactly. So get coaching. Yeah, I, coaching goes both there. ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that and like the the culture you can learn from people who like uh, PP here, right? Right, like, right. For, for right. PP, like the legacy thing, like like going asking someone from like oh five was like was like way harder than like you know asking yourself, right? I I yeah. feel like a lot of the stuff you do now will always be good, whereas like. Mm-hmm. The further back you go, it's like I think it gets harder to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I mean, I don't know. I can, like, I, I do think there's a lot of things that uh, the old era benefited from. Oh yeah, no, so, I for agree. sure. Um, um, there, some there, there, there people that... I'll go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say some people. I you know I I see kind of this uh homogenization of play styles i think i was talking about this on stream the other day people mm-hmm. play very similar there's a, there's one way to play and there that that philosophy is becoming more and more common mm-hmm. um and i think because of that and the things that we're focusing on and the specific options and the and the ways to win and everything like that i think we lose some we lose some individuality some self expression and some also some techniques or you know some anti meta things that could still be useful that were useful in the past and so mm-hmm. yeah i agree Not with for you. sure that and like the idea of practicing back then was like socially like, yeah, like it was you, weird you you try hard like right. you know what I'm saying? and that I, i'm so glad that that is yeah, dead that, that that's that's needed, yeah. not on that at all when i think that's super cool that they want to practice like they want to grind they want to get better mm-hmm. um so yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of things like like I don't know, not everything back then was perfect. I just think oh, just yeah. the resources just give you so much leverage that like man, like if I was like 16 like now bro, I'd be <laughs> playing like 12 hours a day. Like actually, it would like, be crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's just like I couldn't imagine having that at a young age, you know? Yeah. Like it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, but you know, it, you, it, it's like you give and take, right? There was good from that era uh, that's gone now. There's was bad from that era that's gone now. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, kind of taking a shot. But I, I, I would still say I think it's a little easier uh, to become pro now. I think becoming the best player in the world is harder now, though. Hmm. So if that, because yeah. he said like yeah. top 20, I think getting top 20 is easier now, but I think being number one is like, harder because it's just it's just so many people bro you know I don't know, yeah that just, makes a lot of that makes sense for sure yeah it's just like that the volume sense. it's like even even if the floor was the same you still got this like the volume of people you know so it's just more people right <laughs> and that, i think that's just harder to get through like instead of like it being 10 players that were good then that is like 30 players or 40 players at that skill level, right? And like that's just harder <laughs> when you think about it uh in that term. But I, I do think that these like these 40 have everything they need as opposed to the 10 that like you know, I feel like PP, you got to get real creative to get where you got. Yeah. Whereas like I feel like if you had what you had, like what if you had the resources now then like oh my oh, that would have been fun <laughs> yeah. you oh, already man. got number one without that so yeah. could only imagine right. it would be insane you'd probably be doing shit that's like unbeatable like, you i just, mean I'd, i'm still gonna try and figure that out at some point just just not at the moment but uh i yeah, believe it'd, it'd be fun it'd be fun Let's get it um yeah, absolutely yeah. man i hope but, that uh, answered uh your question sam yeah, I don't yeah know. it did definitely did thank you guys yeah, you're very welcome. Oh, yeah. You got any shout outs for us on your way out today? Uh, not really. Actually, I have Aiden to shout out, but you guys already know that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, let's Aiden. go, Aiden. Let's go, All Aiden. Right. All right. Well, you t- peace. Take care. You too. Yeah, have a good one, man. Yeah, yeah. You too. All right. All right. Now we got another that was a caller good queued up. Yeah, it was a good one. Mm-hmm. Candy Cane Jane, what's <laughs> up? Uh, where are you calling in from? What's your question for us today? Hey, hey. Uh, hey. I'm calling in from uh, the Niagara region. Um, I've actually spoken to you guys on Radio Melee before. I used mm-hmm. to be going by the tag Bop Rocks uh, while um. back spoke right before the Freedom for Palestine uh, event. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
So I had to ch change my tag since then. Um, I'm actually coming in with a bit of a hot take, which is kind of uh, the antithesis to what you guys were just talking about. Um, oh, okay. In my opinion, um, right now, information about the uh, competitive game of Melee is overtly difficult to find. And, like, mm -hmm. navigating it um, is hard. Like, you got to go through Discord servers. Like, stuff isn't laid out all that well. And I feel like the, the fact that it is difficult to fully parse through, the fact that it is like that, um, is leading to a lot more issues than people seem to realize. And I have a project that I'm working on, which I think is a solution to these problems. Cool. Because yeah, back in the day, all the information was on uh, Smashboards. Right. Well, right. if no so players was... gave any information, which they didn't usually do back then. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, it depended where you go. I think the Fox boards were pretty, uh, they were helpful, but no, it probably, yeah. probably depended on a lot of things, a lot of factors, what your character was and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, okay. So our producer has prepared, uh, with, with, Ken, with Jane, it has prepared, uh, the walkthrough of, of Candy Cane Jane's Ooh, kind of presentation here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So smash up. Smash yeah, up. walk us through this. Okay. So Smash Up is the current um, working name for it. Uh, this is um, this is a pretty rough page, but I think uh, I actually prepared a sort of pitch for it. Do you guys want to hear that pitch? Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. go for it. Okay. So the pitch is this: um, There's been a lot of work done to give uh, to give players information about tech skill and character spe specific techniques. Actual matchup breakdowns tend to be very dense, difficult to integrate due to lack of specificity or generally unstructured. Um, for example, cookbook uh, gives post priority to whatever was added last and can mislead players to what is important to learn at this level. And with something like Discord, uh, people have to either be constantly at the ready to answer questions or a player has to read through a lot of previous chat logs to see if their queries have been talked about. Um, and with both of them, they have their search functions, but you need to know the exact wordage that was used in order to navigate um, either of their search functions. Um, to remedy these issues, I'm making a hierarchical matchup-based website. Uh, its current mm. working name is SmashUp. It's going to prioritize taking players step by step in understanding the basics, then more advanced character and matchup knowledge using a page layout that has all information on screen at once and contextualizes that information with subtitles and images throughout. Ambitious. Yo, no, that's fire. You know what I really like what you did, Jane? Uh, mm. I really like that you emphasize that matchups are different at different levels. Mm -hmm. I think that is mm -hmm. like that is mm -hmm. something that is I'll give you that in the sense of like people don't like they'll talk about a matchup in the sense of like, yo, how to beat like Mango's Falco. Right. But it's like, yo, I'm like a beginner. I'm learning the game. I'm not going to beat Mango's yeah. Falco, like the, you know, <laughs> so to to break it down like that, I think is really cool because Thank I you. think it I think matchups change given the skill levels. Hell yeah. I yeah. totally agree with that. Like. I think that uh, a lot of players are put into the same situations as top players are, but mm -hmm. when it comes down to like um, how to like navigate what your opponent is doing and how to like figure out what it is that you want to do, it's a totally different game. Right. Now, can I ask you to click on Peach's name? So mm. this is the visual visual styling and presentation that I'm looking for. So uh, do you want me to walk you guys through this? Do you want to kind of look at it for a moment and then ask some questions? What do you want? Uh, I I'm, I'm, something I'm down. I notice at first before we move anywhere is there's a lot of text here. I could see people being a little overwhelmed even from seeing a lot of this. Yeah, that is fair. Um, I am right now, like a lot of the text, like the text in blue pictures is going to be images instead. Um, mm -hmm. and those images and are supposed to help contextualize like what's going on. Like right now, um, I just haven't gone through and taken the screenshots cause all everything so far has been done by me in Photoshop on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, like the three set of 
in the bottom left, the set of three little blue square things there, um, mm. that's all going to like be showcasing like uh, Peach hitting a shield. And that's going to kind of show that like this little section right here is going to be about like Peach shield pressuring and how that is unique to her as a character. Um, I've actually been thinking about your particular gripe, PP, because mm -hmm. like there is a lot of text here, and like it's hard um, to know where to go. And I understand that images are going to help with that, but I, I yeah, it's and I'm not I'm not criticizing. I, I just if you want it to succeed, I think making it as easy as possible for anyone would be really helpful. Because I mean, just to give you a little context, I when I had more uh, fatigue issues. This would just be this. I would I would just be like, I can't even begin to try and handle this. And so I'm not this is not a criticism. It's just something, you know, if I if I, uh, I'd love for this to succeed. And so that's mm -hmm. just something to keep in mind. Yeah. And thank you. Um, One of the things that I'm trying to navigate with this is like how overwhelming, like seeing text documents or like having to scroll through so much information. Oh, yeah. No, it's the same problem. <laughs> hey, hey uh, yeah. uh, Jane, I got an idea to propose. I don't know. You probably thought about this already, but uh, I think because this ties into what you were just saying, too, about like, you know, matchups and characters change throughout different skill levels. I honestly think if you put like you click the character and then it's like beginner mid-level and you you define where what what a beginner what a mid-level what an advanced player would be i think from there like you could have someone choose because say at advanced someone like polish probably knows all of this stuff right so yeah. there's like specific things that you would just have for that type of player but then like maybe if you click like a beginner tab then it can have like does like what peepee's kind of talking about you know what i mean yeah. uh so i'm just uh writing this down different tabs yeah of like a skill levels because i think th right. different things will apply to different skill levels too so yeah um it, i think that would help a lot right now because i i've been thinking about that yeah and like the tabs idea is actually really interesting uh i hadn't thought of that in specific so thank you yeah no um, problem <laughs> yeah, I I'm thinking of uh, not, like uh, splitting it up into six different parts uh, listed from zero to five. Mm -hmm. And this is the way that I'm thinking of breaking it down. Uh, part zero, which you're looking at right now, mm -hmm. uh, is what Peach's tools are. Um, mm -hmm. That's everything that's on this page is what Peach's okay. tools are. Mm -hmm. um, part one would be what Peach wants. Um, if the opponent is vulnerable or badly positioned. So assuming that your opponent is a bad player and keeps putting themselves into bad positions, how to do as much as you can like that uh, with that. Like hmm. it's kind of like uh, what um, top players did like Armada or sometimes you see Mango do it too when they just put a level one CPU in and start comboing them around. Mm -hmm. You know, you just want to know what to do when uh, your opponent is vulnerable. Uh, right. Part two will be uh, navigating what the opponent wants. Um, like, this is what the opponent's looking for. Um, part three will be understanding mix-ups. Um, what options should you call out? Part four will be mm -hmm. conditioning. Um, how to influence what your opponent does. And then part five will be putting it all together. I think that there's a lot more complexity than that, but I think that for this sort of a website, that's sort of like, the end goal with what I would like to do for a bunch of different characters and a bunch of different matchups. I think if I had to uh, say one other thing, I don't think I don't really, I'm not going to really pick apart any of what you just said. I think it's fine. Um, mm -hmm. But something, uh, cause I've, I see various projects come up and I think something that really get, gets them and gets them a hard time is they really want to try and cram everything possible in and I think they just overwhelm themselves. And so if something that might be useful uh, to, to consider is make sure that you, if you can just focus on what you think are the absolute most important things, get those down. And then mm. you can probably build around that some. And that's also going to get you closer to having something out sooner, too. So it's not going to feel like you're just working and working and you're not able to show it yet, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad that you brought up that point, too, because... I think that what I want to make is something that's bigger than me. And mm -hmm. I really mm -hmm. 
one of the things that I'm asking for is uh, help with this. Um, uh, Ogdog, would you be able to uh, click on the next page? So I think that this page is, um, I think that this page is a lot better, period. I think that I've crammed a whole lot less into it. Mm -hmm. um, but like, this is sort of the amount of information that I actually want displayed. Um, Ogdog, can you go click on Jigglypuff? Thank you. And then um, for the specific point that I'm wanting to make, I know that we're kind of skimming through this thing right now, but um, use platforms to Peach's advantage is uh, the page that I want to really... Uh, Ogdog, could you click on that? It's in the bottom left. Thank you. Um, so this page... Um, I don't like this is based from my observations of watching Polish versus Hungry Box and that sort of stuff. But mm -hmm. this page itself uses very simple iconography, uh, uses very simple language in order to get what's across. And it only took me 20 minutes to make. Yeah, this is this is this is pretty this looks pretty yeah, helpful. This is dope. Here. I think if you put like a a gif of the situation mm -hmm. uh instead of like you want to be here or whatever like you can have that but if like you have both. like uh yeah if you have both like if you had a gif of that too that'd be like fire yeah that's what um that's what cookbook likes to do a lot as well is contextualize it using gifs mm -hmm. um what i like want to emphasize about this is that like i think that like even within this conversation you guys or me could probably make like a hundred of these pages for like anything by the end of the day you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that like, one of the things that I kind of want to broadcast about this project is that I want to um, take on as much community information as possible, uh, and integrate it in. And like, I kind of have the plan to make a video on how to make these sort of pages. That way I can get help with making these pages by having other people, you know, contextualize their melee notes into this sort of format so that it can be added on and the sort of whole melee community bastion of knowledge gets to be um, upheld and grown up in a much more navigatable sort of way. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. And you, yeah you, sure. It's just like kind of like a melting pot of everybody's uh, knowledge. Yeah, a melting and then way of describing it. I yeah. was thinking like a t Tower of Babylon. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> but yeah. Um, now, uh, do you guys have like more questions so far? Because there is like a lot I can talk about. I can talk about like what I want to do with like what my next steps I see are. But I really would like to hear your questions and input as well. Um, I guess one thing I think would be cool is if you had like especially for beginners right if you ask them a, like a question like what do you tend to struggle with most right and then you can get an average of like what's difficult and then you could possibly just like make a guide on like how to get around it say if some of them are like okay i with peach i roll in the corner verse puff and get rested like the armada mango clip like right like mm -hmm. i mean obviously you could say just like well, just don't roll or something, right? That's just that's like brain dead advice, but it's more so just like, how do you like contextual that to where it's like, okay, here's why you were in that situation and here's either how to get around it or just avoid it entirely. Like, I guess what I mean to say is if you could have something that like common things that beginners struggle with and have guides for that, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. So, because yeah. a lot of them struggle with, like, I think, like, the same, like, five things that someone's just picking the game up with that, like, we all know how to get around. Mm -hmm. If you can make it easier for them to, like, at least even if they still struggle, if they're aware of it, I think that's, like, a big plus. Yeah. The note that I just took is um, ask newbies on things they struggle with and create pages based on community need is, like, that's kind of what I'm getting from. Yeah. You, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 Because, like, yeah, there are all these situations that, like, hold people back a lot and frustrate people a lot. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I want to clarify with this project is that, like, this is, um, this is 
sort of more for mid-level players and oh, okay up, for sure because mm. i feel like there are a lot of really good resources for noobs at the moment um mm -hmm. you know not to uh and call them noobs for like <laughs> no nah, I, I feel like <laughs> like, hey, we all gotta start somewhere you know we all gotta start somewhere that's right um, but like i want this to be much more for like mid-level like like people who know how to press the buttons people who know that like double shining on shield is like cool and fun or whatever but don't really know how to integrate like the tech skill into situations and how to really make a game plan because mm -hmm. mm. I feel like there's just been so much melee mysticism throughout the entire running of the thing mm. that like people just think, oh man, if like I press buttons good enough, like I'm going to figure out how it is that I'm going to get through this thing. And like, I thought like that for a while. I'm talking. Yeah, that's a lot of people for a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like. Like, that just seems to be such a common hurdle that, like, that's kind of the hurdle that I'm looking for, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, but, like, I'm definitely, I'm definitely gonna have to think of a way to integrate your idea to, like, make sort of a, my own community voice sort of thing where, like, people talk about, like, hey, this situation is what's got me, like, what's got me going on and two, like, lately, you know? Mm -hmm. Um... Go ahead. Yeah, because I, I think it, it's just those small things. I think the idea is fire, though. Like, I think, like, all this is just godlike. Like, if, like, once you get it, like, once you get everything you need, I don't know. I think, uh, especially, like you said, for mid-level players, like, you're right in the sense of they don't have, like, beginners have a lot of resources because it helps them get into the game. And then top players have a lot of resources because they like have each other and you mm -hmm. know or it's like the mid-level players in this weird situation you know yeah. it's like you're 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 you know how to play but you're not hella good so you just get lumped in that box and then a lot of them like you said just grind until they they think they know what to do but there's nothing like deliberate that they can work on without asking like a top player trying to get lessons, which is cool, but sometimes I think there needs to be something there that doesn't involve like particularly one on ones with people. Mm -hmm. And I think this would be amazing for that. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh do you want to hear about what my like next steps moving forward are in my mind? Go for it. Okay. Um Og dog, I see that you just switch back to uh, the facial reactions, but um, would we be able to go all the way back to the front? So uh, if you click on Marth now, um, I've made a landing page for Marth, and like this mm. is a lot like this is a lot worse for lack of better words um, than the Peach page is, but. I'm thinking that for now, I'm going to make a level zero for every single character before I start really going in depth in certain ways. Yeah. So sure. I like I've been reaching out like uh, I reached recently reached out to the best player in Manitoba who also qualified for um, uh, Gale Summit, which you brought up earlier, uh, Brandon. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And um She's a really good Marth who um, I'm going to try to get all the information I can out of her about like uh, what what this page needs to have. And mm -hmm. like what I'm looking for as a next step is like um, people who feel as though they know like the different resources and the um, different tools that are available to understand uh, other characters tools. Um, if they can link me up with that, if they can help me like figure out ways to display that that are good, um, all that sort of stuff, that's gonna kind of be my next steps. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, and then uh, going deeper and deeper into that. Um, yeah. So, sorry, no, I'm just. No, like, you're good. You're good. I I think it's good. I think you know, so as long as you just get input. I think the more input, yep. the better. Yeah. Uh, this is a great start. I mean, the fact that you got all this with, like, I don't know how much input you got, but 
I mean, that's still like really impressive because I know for damn sure you said we could all make a hundred pages. Of, I don't know if I could. I could make like two. I, I think you could. <laughs> I think you could. Uh, I've that's, actually got a little step by step guide on how to make a page. Toe, if you're saying that. Yeah. I was thinking that, you know, something that would be cool if you can enable it is like enabling, you know, members of each character's community to somehow contribute. Because, I mean, that's how wikis usually get built up is that whoever is a specialist of whichever character or what have you ends up contributing all their knowledge and, you know, maybe they're not the person who at the end of the day is compiling that information. You know, maybe there's someone who, like, I guess organizes it or, like, you know, formats it the way that you'd want it to be formatted. But if there was some way, like, I think the cookbook kind of did this successfully where they uh, kind of opened it up to where, okay, if you're, like, a member of a, or if you play a certain character, then you can become a, I guess, a modern owner of whatever, an editor or whatever mm -hmm. given character page. And that way, you know, you shouldn't, I feel like at the end of the day, you shouldn't feel like you need to write all of the information for every single member of the cast because there's just too many and nobody knows that much about every single character. Um, mm -hmm. It would just be a just a monumental undertaking. So if there's some way to, I guess, open source it. Not yeah. open, maybe open source is the wrong word, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah, that's that'd no, be that, good. That, that would be good. I think it's just less sh like strain on you too mm -hmm. to try to get everything done. Yeah, I'm noting that down. Find ways to open source it. Because yeah, if somebody else could just know, like especially like a matchup, like I don't know, like Kirby Roy or something, like yeah, <laughs> like, you, like if you don't know that, like, some esoteric stuff in there. Yeah, when right. you can, it's not just every character too. If it's every matchup. Because, right. uh, I mean, I don't know what I would even say about, like, some, some matchups, it's, it's like Mewtwo, Mewtwo Zelda. It's like, <laughs> right. I don't know, man. It's I, like, I, I mean, what, a, what am I going to put in there? All right, start, bro. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless I get, like, a lot of support behind me and, like, get a lot of time yeah. for this, like, I'm probably only going in, like, I said that, like, I want to get six layers deep. I'm probably mm -hmm. only six layers deep with, like, the top eight of the cast, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I think that's a good start, too. And then if, like, the demand grows, you can just, like, add another character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I, in my mind, there's two ways to do this. That's you build it vertically or horizontally. By vertically, I mean you but you basically get it polished and looking good for one matchup like it could be your Peach Puff to, to show, like, okay, this is what it's going to feel and look like. And then and then you can go from there and go out and then then you go outwards and you add other characters other matchups or you can try to get all the information done first and get all the matchups in there get all the characters in there but maybe it doesn't look the nicest at first and then once everybody is usable then you can add the polish to it i, I don't know which you value first whether you want to make it polished first or get all the information first but I, in my mind there's like kind of two ways to do it in that sense mm -hmm. yeah i think that i want to get the information first um mm -hmm. I do actually have like a flow graph for like how someone would be able to go about making um, one of the pages. If you guys want to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we could, you could guys. take it, yeah. check it, take it, yeah. take a look. Interested to check out more about the process here. Flow graph right here. Ah. So start, do you have a matchup? So if no, then uh, find one. Uh, pick your main and a second character. It can be one you're an expert in or one you're curious about. Do you have a situation? Uh, look at current pages. I don't have to read through all this. I'm just <laughs> right. But this is basically this is the submission process. Yeah, yeah. But like, this is also sort of like if you're curious at all to make this, and like you're kind of like, yeah, I kind of want to try my hand at making one of these, mm -hmm. like. Um, Google drawings is like, it's fairly simple to use. It's pretty much just like a level up from MS paint to a certain degree. Um, and like, if anyone is interested in making these sorts of things, like just going through this, like you only need to figure out a couple of points and then, yeah, you can, you mm -hmm. can make this, you know? Right. Nah, yeah, this, this does look. It's simpler than I thought, because at first I was like, "Damn!" But uh, hey, Google Draw, Google is uh, out here with their. I was using Google uh, Docs the other day, and I was mm -hmm. like, "Oh, this isn't that bad." Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, especially when you see people typing on the same thing as you at the same time. Right, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's the craziest stuff. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts? Uh, PP, I haven't heard from you in a while. If you have any other thoughts on this project, um, I think uh, if there's anything else that needs to be said about it, probably including if people are interested, where they can go to to contact you, work with you. Uh, how mm -hmm. they can get involved would probably be the best thing to plug here. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. So my uh, Twitter is uh, bop underscore rocks. That is B O P underscore rocks. Um, okay. It's got a weird looking profile uh, picture. Uh, shout outs to uh, Chaka for making that for me. It's um, it's the queen from Delta rune uh, in the style of uh, Homer Simpson. Okay. You said B O P underscore rocks. Yeah, R O X. Oh, okay. That's why I spelled it. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I'm a bit too quirky as it is. I got you to follow. Uh, awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. I only follow five people, but my fifth slot is open, so I'll follow you back. <laughs> All right, on. I appreciate. Nice. It. <laughs> um, I am really anxious to like release this like publicly. I've released it in a couple discords, but like. With your, with like, since you guys seem really hype about it and like really down for like seeing this as a project flur fl flourishing, um, I think that I'm gonna uh, post uh, updates and stuff about it um, there. Good luck to you. Yeah, yeah best of luck. Yeah, you got any shout outs good. for us on your way out today? Yeah. Um, shout outs to the Niagara region, uh, melee scene. Um, yeah, let's go. Yeah. We're constantly dying, but you know, uh, is that like Buffalo area? Uh, above like Buffalo, upstate. Yeah, oh, okay. Right. Okay. For sure. For sure. Buffalo loves to come over here and we love Buffalo. We love okay. Buffalo. Right on. So much. I can't wait until, uh, things start to peel back a little bit so I can feel mm -hmm. You know, uh, safe going back to Buffalo, uh, right? Borders and all that. Mm. Um, mm. shout outs, uh, to my friend Ash, who's helped me a lot. Um, just encouraging me. I don't tend to work on very many projects, though I have a lot of ideas, and mm -hmm. uh, it's been very helpful having Ash like so, so, so much. Uh, shout outs to B Bats. Um, Sickest peach to ever touch the sticks, and I mm -hmm. am not taking any ads on that. And uh, okay, let's go. Um, <laughs> thank you for listening to my pitch, Waff. Good luck with the uh, good luck with the invitational man. Thank like, you, I appreciate that. Thank you, course. and good luck with your project. Thank you. Yeah, thank it's you. a dope project. Thank yeah, you. I hope it gets. I uh, hope it gets to the state that you'd be happy with, because mm -hmm. definitely think it could help a lot of new players out. Yeah, I think that it could help the community as a whole. Like, yeah, like I'm thinking, like even like commentators, like will be reading through about matchups that they don't really understand. Sure, yeah, that yeah, out. that would help a lot. When I have to commentate yeah. Mewtwo Zelda, I'll uh, I'll lean on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure I get right on the Mewtwo Zelda page just for you, Toe. Thank you. Well, cheers, Candy Cane Jan. Thank you for calling in. Good, uh, good presentation. Thank you all so much. Bye now. See ya. Bye. Shout out to Candy Cane Jane. Yep. That's Wait, exactly right. Rhyming in the name, too. Uh, yeah, right. I like the tag. I like the tag. Right. It does roll right. off the tongue better than Bob mm -hmm. Rocks. I think it's a good change. Right, right. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I think we're getting at least one more caller in. I'm not 100% yeah, sure. Probably one more. Yeah. I know we had a ton of questions today oh, in the Discord. That code Man, the God? Code, code Man. man. Yo, shout out to Code Man. What's up, Code Man? Where are you calling in from? What's your question for us today? How's it going? Uh, upstate New York. Um, upstate new york yep um oh. so uh my question uh is so yesterday i think yesterday or today um we uh the olympics was officially concluded the winter olympics and the summer olympics happened less than a year ago so mm -hmm. i've been thinking for for quite a while um will there ever be an olympics for esports um Ooh. it's clear from mm. like from like everyone in sports that the olympics is seen as the most prestigious event in all of sports. Um, so what would, what would this, what would an Olympics event mean for, for video games as a whole or, or just smash? And do you think the prestige of the event would inspire 
you know, older yeah. smashers to or retired smashers to pick it up one more time for for a shot at gold. Well, I that's know a the cool first idea. Thing... You yeah, go ahead, PP. No, you go ahead. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead. You go ahead. Um, so something I did know about the Olympics is there was already a consideration to put esports in there. I read a couple articles on that, so I know that's already being considered. I mean, not all esports, obviously. Um, just you know, probably uh, League of Legends and Dota. I think are the ones being considered, but. Um, you know, I, it, maybe it, you know, it, it wouldn't be the same, right? So I don't know if eventually they go side by side or we have a separate Olympics, but either way, it's an interesting question. So I, I'll just go with the, uh, you know, the Olympics for, for video games. And, um, I mean, I think it very much may, you know, like maybe the IOC t has an esports division, right? And then, so that, then that there's a legitimization there. And then they we test everyone for, I don't, I mean, I don't know. The doping question is already kind of weird in terms of how we try to handle that anyway, but it mm -hmm. would be an additional thing, but maybe there's a way that that standardizes it. And maybe there's rules that riot already uses that they adopt or, or something. I don't really know how that works, but yeah. So, I mean, there's a framework and then there's a committee and then, you know, um, if you win an Olympic medal, right. Then maybe there are more magazines that want to interview you. And so you get more, um, you get more press that way, and then that, and then the then people have narratives, and then they go back to the games, and then people want to see that. So I think it does legitimize, um, legitimize something that's already growing in respect, growing in appreciation for people. But then for Smash, um, I don't know how many people we would get out of retirement for that. I don't think I guess it might depend on the sport, but I don't think the Olympics make people a lot of money. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I think usually there's like a fund or something that more like, about the prestige. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what it is. And so I don't think anyone comes out of retirement to <laughs> work really hard yeah. for melee for no money, but maybe I'm wrong. That'd be kind of hype, I guess. Um, but maybe there's like, uh, it, it, there could be something in terms of melee itself where there's a retiree league. And I think that's been floated a couple of times. That'd be fun. That'd be pretty funny. I think the commentary yeah. for that would be absolutely hilarious. Um, I think the, um, you know, if anything, I think what's, what's kind of interesting here, it's not necessarily, is it exactly the Olympics, but like, is there, I mean, I don't know. I feel like it's a larger question, obviously than just smash, but like, I mean, I think we've had things similar to this in the past, right? Like we had MLG, um, and back then there were a lot of, obviously there were halo heads. There were, there were people from, uh, other console esports that took an interest in smash, some of which still follow the game today. Um, and I remember, you know, MLG, I remember when I went to MLG, like Anaheim 2014, you know, that was kind of tight because I, and, and, and similarly, you know, with the FGC, we kind of had that with Evo. Um, and I definitely think that cross pollinate, cross pollination mm -hmm. helps in some ways. Like, um, I mean, I, I think a lot of people got, definitely took an inch. I mean, obviously you can't really, yeah, th th I mean, there's no argument that obviously Evo 2013 in particular really helped Melee's growth a yeah. lot. So mm -hmm. I think anytime there's kind of events like that where it's Smash, but it's like other games and, you know, there's there's that kind of exposure. I think it's uh, I think it's always good. Uh, the question is, do I ever think it's going to be like the Olympics themselves? I have no idea. And I think I mean, that 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 one's tricky, too, because I think the Olymp if it's if we're talking literally the Olympics, um, you know, for all the good they do, obviously, they, they're they kind of they're kind of shitty in some other ways, like. You know, with regards to, for example, it's really hard to anyone knows it's really hard to share clips of the Olympics. You can't go on Twitter really and find it. They're really um, restrictive over how their content gets shared. So, you know, it's some, in some ways it could be kind of like a double edged sword. Uh, you know, if you if you've if you've tried to watch Olympics, because I was trying to watch this this year's Olympics, it's really quite difficult. You know, you have to go mm. through a very specific uh, place to watch it, you know, it's, if you're not watching it literally on TV, you know, with, with NBC or whatever, you know, you've got to get the, the specific app. Um, and, and so, you know, there, there's, you know, it's, there's, there's additional questions beyond just, uh, like, oh, uh, you know, we get on the Olympics or whatever, and then esports is on the Olympics and it's like, it's crazy and it's all good. You know, there's, there's always these kind of considerations, like with regards to broadcasting rights and licensing and stuff like that. Um, that I don't know if we're necessarily equipped to 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 to, to handle yet as a community. Um, so yeah, it, it's kind of complicated. Yeah, I always I thought know. too, like how would that work with all the individual games? Right, right, and There's then also get, given the laws with like 
I mean, each company's different, right? And then you got to think about what, like, depending on what country it's in, like, how would that affect? The, mm-hmm. you, you know what? The, what if certain countries are going through certain situations and we can't can't play? I guess Smash in particular in set countries, right? Like, I don't know. Uh, right. That that's just past. It's the idea sounds lit though, Kobe. Man, I'm not gonna lie. I just think like. The execution sounds so hard because you got to have always about all these, execution. All these companies getting on board, right? And everyone then, owns yeah. these games. They not right. every, no one owns football or or basketball right. or anything, right? Th- that and then you got to think about what the context within these games, given the country that the Olympics would even be in. And if we're mm-hmm. if it, if it's the same Olympics as the actual Olympics, then it's like, you know, who, who knows what they're gonna do? What kind of like like. Tove said copyright stuff that yeah. you have. And then if we do our own Olympics, right? I feel like the original Olympics could just like cease and desist it. Like it, I, it's tricky. Like you it it it'd be crazy though. But it's yeah. just it's a lot. <laughs> There's a way to do it, but yeah, it's a lot. And uh I feel like I feel like fundamentally, I don't know. I think that something would need to I don't know. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but my hope or my dream for this sort of thing is like, I hope that the laws change at some point with regards to, because right now, you know, the way, you know, the way digital law, like DMCA law and stuff like that is written is very, like it was written decades ago before, obviously we had streaming, before we had mm-hmm. the, you know, it's, just, it's like basis. it's reason we're in the situation we're in with like Slippy and stuff, right? Like it's the reason that, right. so I feel like it'd be cool if at some point those laws get revisited. I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm obviously not a lawyer. I don't know right. if yeah, it's even realistic at this point, but I really do hope that digital law gets a little bit more. Um, fair use. Ma- malleable. Yes. More fair use. Exactly. I hope that there's, yeah. which would, which would unlock things like this because right now anytime you want to put on something like this you're basically hoping well i hope nobody comes around and says oh you can't do this because uh we own this copyright and <laughs> yeah you're like gambling you're just, you're essentially. yep yeah yeah so that's the that's one of the challenges right now just tough, yeah. but the idea like in, in the perfect world where you yeah. just actually think about like country to country and stuff like that i think it'd be dope but yeah it's just like there's so much i was like tof was saying there's just so much legality behind it so much legality, and I also think where it, the Olymp- where it happens matters too. So you you got not only company legality, but then like legality depending on the country it's in. Mm-hmm. That's just a lot. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot of questions. Yeah, that's a lot. Oh, you know, it there's is a lot is. to unpack there. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the idea is like you know, perfect world utopia where we actually do it. That'd be kind of lit. I, yeah. I, I would tune in for sure. Um. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if uh, I don't know if that answered your question, Code. Yeah, I don't know if you had like a, yeah. a take on it, Code Man. Yeah, that, love, I love the Pichu, was... by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. noted Pichu. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think that was a great discussion. Um, I I just wanted to mention, like, I think the Smash World Tour kind of tried to incorporate some of the ideas um, from mm-hmm. the Olympics, like you know, mm-hmm. you know, pitting countries uh, against each other and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that stuff I think is really cool. That stuff I think is really cool. I'll take this, I'll take a little aside to say one of the things I really like when I went to air, uh, Brandon, I think you went to an air at one point, right? You went to one of the ones, not the one I went to three. I think it was that air was got like, they did, they did country crew battles though. Yeah. yeah, Same with the one I went to. And so, and I thought that was really cool. I, it, 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 I I thought, in fact, I thought, because they, 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 they had a USA crew, uh, but mm. I, I was kind of thinking, like, man, I kind of wish there almost wasn't, because cause mm. I thought the, the best part of the event was, like, you know, Ireland versus Germany, Italy like versus EU. And, it, and seeing yeah. these, like, yeah, and it was like, because uh, we can't do that over here, obviously. NA is, like, USA, Mexico. I mean, we, Canada, we like, that's can it. with states, but we like, you states. know, like East Coast, West Coast, stuff like that. But it's not the same as like, it's not the like same countries, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Right, right. And yeah, so sure. I thought that was really cool to see. And and I think country versus country is always interesting. Like even for like for chess, they do the chess Olympiad. I know they do that like for math, right? They do like the math Olympiad, like they'll do that for, you know. So yeah. I, I think... um Taking something that's traditionally like in melee with crew battles, I think taking something that's traditionally one v one and turning it into a team versus team or crew versus crew format, 
Uh, it always kind of shakes it up, makes it interesting. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think um, I, I think that stuff is always fun. So if there's more ways to do it, then we should do it. Yeah. I'm down. If you know anything, code man, by all means. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I wish I had the resources to, to make it come to life, but yeah. maybe one day we'll see some sort of variant of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think the laws, like what Tuff was saying, laws would have to change. Companies would have to be on board, and then the countries would have to also be on board. What if some countries think esports is just like mind control? Bullshit. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then other countries mm-hmm. don't, right? So yeah, yeah. I mean, we're hard. we're doing our best just to get Nintendo on board. So right, right, right. we're doing right, a great right. job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, yeah, cold man. Uh, hey, thanks for I calling know, in, man. You're goaded. Appreciate yeah, it. it. You Thank you. Shout um, out for us today. Yeah, uh, definitely. Shout outs to you guys. Um, shout outs to Brandon for um, for the tournament this weekend. Thank I'll definitely you. be nice. definitely be tuning in. Um, and uh, shout outs to PP and Tove. Uh, Tove's the only the only one I haven't met in the group. So hopefully at a tournament uh-huh. someday. Uh, at some point, hi. yeah, I'm sure I'm yeah. sure it'll happen. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, and then uh, one last thing, uh, I I got a lot of um, heckling for this, but. Uh, shout outs to the Pichu Discord. I didn't shout them out last time. Wow, <laughs> the Pichu Discord. All right, yeah, heckle, heckle. How is dare you? On. Yo, shout That's outs right. to Cold Man. We played in bracket once. I like barely beat Cold Man. Like I'm talking barely. Like what matchup? A sliver. It it was Pichu. No, he destroyed my Falco, and then I went Fox because I'm like, dude, I don't, I, why, why? I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a good choice. <laughs> shout outs to Cold Man. Shout outs to the Pichu players out there, man. Y'all are actually a rare breed. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank ICG. you. ICG. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's out TG. there somewhere. He's, he's actually he's actually in the Discord. Um, oh, there you God. go. Good luck to you guys. Yeah. Good luck to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> hey, well, thanks for calling in, and hope you have a good rest of your day, Code Man. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, guys. Yep. You too. That's right. See right. Take care. Yeah. Man. All the so, Pichu players out there. Yeah. Pichu, yeah, definitely a rare breed for for various reasons. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. That's crazy, it is. man. You, somebody, yeah. yo, somebody's putting on the suit. I appreciate it. Somebody got to yeah. do it. It's, it's not gonna be me. It. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure, for sure. Well, hey, um, we've been going for, we've been rocking and rolling for a little bit here, Brandon. Um, mm-hmm. but I think it's about time to let you go. It's been a good time. Had a lot of good discussion. But I think mm-hmm. right before we do, I think we want to turn it over to the community voice. Okay. That's right. I really want to see what you've got to ask for everyone out there in the YouTube comments so we can talk about it next week. I'm sure it's a killer question. We actually talked to Brandon about it before we started. And he was like, oh, I got a good one. So uh, um, I, I think it's just a funny question. All right. right. All right. It's I'm ready for a funny question. question. I, I'll, I'll just be, bit. I'll be silly with it. Right. Since I'm a basketball fan, I really like basketball. Who okay. do you guys think would win in a one on one between Steph Curry and LeBron James? In melee. In melee. <laughs> if you gave him a controller. In melee. Well, <laughs> we'll listen, Steph Curry would get, he'd get that Zane coaching and that PG coaching. <laughs> that All true. Him out. Hey, look, but on the flip side, I feel like Kobe right. would try to get in touch with LeBron. So I don't know. Maybe it'd be a fair fight. <laughs> yeah. maybe I, be a fair I would love fight. to see uh, LeBron James versus Steph Curry. That's a great question. One-on-one melee, first to five. Yeah. Yeah, I really. Yeah. I, it, five. It, it, There's yeah. no doubt about who's better after that one. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. Kalindi would lose his mind. That's true. He would lose his mind. Yeah, yeah. he would that lose would be, his mind. That'd be crazy. The melee community, every man. So I think yeah. the, the, the melee scene loves Braun, man. They yeah. love Braun so well, much. It's yeah. hard. It's hard not to love Braun. It's hard dude. not to love LeBron. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm definitely a Steph enthusiast. But uh, Same. you know, I uh, I'm definitely a huge fan of Brian. I, I don't know who would win that honestly. I, I'm just curious to see who they would even pick. Being real, yeah, yeah. The yeah. people we talk about who they main, how the set would go. We're very interested <laughs> in all the details. YouTube comments, please yeah. let us know. That's yeah, right. Community voice man, like I said, who you guys got? One on one melee, LeBron. Curry is, is, uh, I mean, Curry's what? Curry's like early thirties, right? Like, I feel yeah. like Curry grew up in the era where like he might have played melee at some point. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, so did Bron, though, you ever seen that picture of Bron when he first got in the league and he's like walking out of the, oh, the team oh, bus with the PlayStation Two? I have seen that. Yeah, he, he he probably dabbled a little bit. Probably dabbled. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. 
That's well, yeah, that, that's my that's my question for you guys. Who you guys got? Who you I think Brandon's going to be checking out the comments on this one. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I got to see who'd win that. Yeah, or yeah. who they think would win that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, hey, that's a wonderful one, man. Um, I mean, a lot of fun having you on, man. We had a lot of laughs this episode, which is, you know, yeah. always wonderful. Dude, so thanks for, sure. for bringing your joy. Thanks for bringing that's right. you know, everything that you're bringing to the community. I'm glad we got to highlight that and, and, and your that. wisdom for all the other questions. Um, no, I just appreciate you guys having me, man. And uh, I can't say everything that I got planned. But we got some stuff in the works, y'all. More stuff. Mm. I wish I could just tell y'all, but I just, I actually just can't. Stay tuned. Follow but, me uh, on just, Twitter. Yeah, follow me on Twitter, man. Don't I'm going to be walk. announcing more stuff. That is stuff that's better for just the community as a whole. All that stuff. So just, uh, just tap in. We got more events coming up. So just stay tuned. Heck yeah. Well, thank you, Brandon. Thank you so much, Toe, for holding me down as always. All the yep. knowledge, everything else. Thank you guys out there for calling in, watching, listening. This is another episode of Radio Melee. Signing out. Peace.